Hello everyone. Today we're going to have a look at uh, the basics of the Kintrax Animal Breeder software. So when you open the program, you'll see this uh, opening window. Uh, go up the top and click New to create a new database. We'll give it a name, simple name such as Dogs, and click OK to save it. So we've got our database now, and it will show up in this database list. To open a database, all you've got to do is click on the name of the database. First thing that happens if you've never used it before is you'll get a, a message saying to enter some settings and the settings form opens. You can open settings at the top here using this button as well. So all the fields with a red label need to be filled in near the minimum. So the country, Australia on the first tab and we'll go to the next tab which is the animal tab and we'll choose an animal type. So there's a list of different animal types uh, so we'll just choose dog. If you go down the bottom, if you haven't got the animal in your list, you can just type it in, whatever it is. Uh, if it's one from the list though, you can click auto fill and it will put some basic settings in and save you a lot of trouble filling things out. So we click auto fill and things like the terminology for the male, female and things like that will fill in the life expectancy. Next tab, breeding. There's nothing much there. The birth calendar is already filled in. And the custom fields, um, these are 15 fields of your choice. So you customize the program depending on your animal. And if there's any information that you want to add that's very particular, you can create a field for it and the program will store that as well. So there's the custom fields there. When you move your mouse over, the help on the right uh, tells you all about it. Pedigree tab is just some basic in some information that's used on the pedigree, such as uh, email address and things like that. And there's some options. For example, up the top here, store pictures inside the database, uh, means that everything is in one file. So the photos and everything are in the one file with the data, which is really good for uh, moving the database to another location or uh, sharing it by email or on the web. Good idea to just leave the picture size as small. It's usually adequate for pedigrees and things like that. Then there's some backup options. You can back up on closing to your computer. So the settings have been saved. We click save. Uh, do we want to add a new dog? Yes, so click yes. You can also use the button at the top here uh, whenever you want to create a new animal. So we'll click yes and this form opens which adds a new record. We'll give the animal a name such as Bart Simpson and the only other thing in red is the sex. So we'll just put the male or dog uh, and you can add any other information as well. As for the parents, uh, you can just enter them here as a new parent, or I'll show you a better way of doing it in a second. So we're not adding any more records. We saved that one. And if we look in our search list now, we've created one record and it's Bart Simpson. Click on Bart's name. And in the first box to the right, uh, there's some basic information about him, which is all we entered really was just the sex. Uh, if you double click on it though, you can go in and edit it. Let's enter a birthday. So we'll go back a few months and just choose a random day. Click OK and the birth date is there. Now when we save, you can see that the name's still there and the details have been updated, including calculating the age. OK, so we've got our first basic animal. Now we want to add Bart's parents. A uh, very simple way is just to go to the pedigree button here and Bart's name's there all on its own. You right click and choose create new sire or new father and enter the father's name. So we'll just put Homer and uh, the sex is already there as a dog, click save. And now the pedigree updates and Homer's name's there and you'll notice it's on the list too. Let's create a mother, Marge, click save. And now Bart has a pedigree with two parents. And the list now has three animals. You'll notice that Marge's name is in pink and the others are in blue. Let's go from the parents and add a grandparent. That's Abe coming up there. And his name's on the list now. They're all just in alphabetical order at the moment. So if we click on any of these names, their pedigree is already there too. So if the parents are known, the program automatically matches everything up. You only need to really know the parent of each animal. And that's how you create a pedigree. You can keep going on that for as many generations as you want. 
and uh, it's a very simple way of entering data. Uh, it's actually a lot quicker than using a spreadsheet or a Word document. So we double click uh, Abe's and we want to add a father hit this way. We can click on the new button. So let's type something in. So we've got grandfather. Click save. And that's the other way of adding parents. You can also use the find button and find a parent that you've already entered before. And that makes it really simple. Some of the other boxes, such as the breed here, uh, it'll have a drop down list of previously used choices, but you can just enter something there and save it. And when you go into another animal or add a new animal, let's edit this one, when you use the drop down, that name will be there. So you only have to enter the breed and the color and things like that once, and you can use those on your list from then on. And that's gradually how you build a family tree. So up here is four buttons. There's profile, health, breeding, and finance. So they're sort of the four categories of functions for the program. So the profile basically has all the animal details. Uh, and you can see the subheadings there, dog, journal, pedigree, descendants, show, and documents uh, have bit different aspects of the dog's personal profile. The next one, health, has Treatments and reminders, diet, weight, and notes. And the buttons above that are, are sensitive to what you're, you're looking at. So if you're on weight, it'll say add weight. If you're on treatments, it says add treatments. So they change every time you click on one of those headings. And you click the add to add it. And that's how the whole program works. You click on a heading like this, uh, and then you choose a subheading. And then you use the buttons that appear above it to add or operate various functions relating to that name and relating to those headings.